And joining us now in the studio to explore this topic further is Save Women's Sport campaigner and Sky News commentator Catherine Deves. Thank you for joining us, Catherine. Now, the question I've got is, you've got FINA, you've got mm -hmm. FIFA, you've got other organisations coming out now and saying we're going to make policies where uh, trans women will not be competing with biological women. Would it be a brave sporting organisation that started going against that grain and said, no, we're not going to have such a policy? Well, here in Australia, we have a number of our sporting organisations that have adopted policies that prioritise gender identity uh, over sex. But as we're seeing, uh, like, on the global stage, we've also got sports like World uh, Triathlete, a triathlon and canoeing um, following FINA's uh, example. Uh, and I think that if we do start to see uh, these men and boys claiming trans identities and competing against the girls, it is really unfair. It is particularly unfair. And look, what, what I am interested in, um, FINA has proposed an open category, they're mm -hmm. calling it, separate from the men's and the women's, um, that trans and intersex athletes can compete in. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my position is always about the women and girls. Mm. Um, I have stood for uh, and argued for uh, women having the right to a female only, a dedicated female only sports category. Uh, so how they decide to solve uh, men and boys wanting to compete in the girls' competition and where they get accommodated, you know, whatever solutions they come up with, I would welcome that provided that the girls have their own category. The discussion around this issue is, is so often infected by activists who say that even discussing it creates harm and, and therefore we can't even talk about it. Now, you know, unfortunately there are some discussions that are hard to have but mm -hmm. we, you know, we need to have them. Uh, and working in newspapers as I do, you know, with these days we get real-time feedback on what people are reading online and these stories always do really well. And at the same time, you've got all these people who say, oh, this is simply the culture wars. This is not a real issue. This is not something people worry about. But I think it has cut through because mm -hmm. it's fundamentally an issue of fairness. Mm -hmm. And that is an Australian value. And, you know, if you're a parent who's got kids competing in sport, you would be looking at this and going, well, what does this mean for my kids? What does it mean for your kids? Oh, that's exactly right. I mean, here we're trying, we're dealing with competing rights. Uh, it's a balancing of rights. And so far in this debate, it has all been about trans wanting inclusion. And it's only been recently that women and girls, say here with FIFA, also World Rugby a couple of years ago, uh, have been standing up for the interests of women. Now, as a parent, uh, when you take your kids to soccer training or whatever it is, and on the weekends you're going to multiple sporting activities, I mean, you can see the performance differences between boys and girls from even in the under sixes. So, I mean, sports is such a massive part of our life here in Australia. Um, so it is filtering down. We are seeing it at community level and community feeds elite. Um, I'm hearing about it in my community, the sports that are being impacted by even one male going in and taking the spot of a woman, whether it's uh, longboard, uh, skateboarding, soccer, uh, the list goes on and on and on. And the impact that one male can have is that the women and girls become demoralised, they step away, uh, parents might withdraw their child because they're concerned that she might get um, injured if it's yeah. collision or contact sports. So it has a really big effect. Yeah, and look, it's interesting what FINA has done. Um, they actually are technically allowing trans women to compete. They've got this mm. little sort of caveat in there, which pro I'm guessing probably legal told them to put it in so they're not completely cutting it off. But you are, if you are a trans woman who transitioned before the age mm. of 12, mm -hmm. you are allowed to compete in women's categories. Now, that is an effective ban mm -hmm. because very few countries will allow you to transition uh, below the age of 12. But... Do you reckon that goes far enough or should it just be an outright nix? It should be based on your sex observed and recorded at birth, yeah. uh, in my view, because when you're looking at a 12-year-old boy who's being medically transitioned, I think that raises some quite serious moral and ethical questions about arresting the puberty in an otherwise uh, healthy child. And with respect to, say, I mean, this is on the basis of testosterone, and the benefits of testosterone begin accruing in utero. A male fetus gets a dose at about six weeks, um, six or after conception, six weeks after birth. That continues throughout their childhood. And even in the FINA research, you can see that the performance uh, starts to diverge between boys and girls at around the age of eight.
I mean, the, the wall's sort of been broken down now. Mm. Uh, FINA has led the way on this. Um, what should we expect to see in the next six months? Oh, look, I mean, these policies take time to develop. Mm. Um, I think now that FINA has led the charge, there will be these other sporting codes that will follow suit. Um, and with the FINA guidelines, I mean, these were drafted by... Uh, Dr Annabel Bennett, who is an Australian retired judge, she was a tribunal member who um, was the lead member for the cast of some menu decision. Mm. Her credentials are impeccable. She is a world expert legal mind on this issue and she was behind uh, the drafting of the FINA guidelines. So we can be very reassured uh, that their level of integrity and also the consideration was given to all the evidence, all the competing rights. So we can be really confident that FINA is absolutely the gold standard and hopefully the other sports follow suit. Those are exactly my thoughts as well. <laughs> Catherine Deeds, thank you so much for joining us. It was fabulous to have you here. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Caleb.